And hello, everyone. Good evening, afternoon, or morning, wherever you may be. My name is Carolyn Owens, and I am the host of Let's Coach with Carolyn. Welcome back. Let's Coach is a show that brings the best from the coaching world for you to use in your everyday life, and we talk about what coaching can do for you. We bring you some great small business ideas and some good news stories and stories about people paying it forward in their everyday lives. And when I'm not hosting the show, I serve as the chairwoman, president, CEO, whatever way you want to call it, of Infinity Coaching Incorporated, where we help you up-level your skills so you can up-level your career, your business, your life, your income. And I assist my clients with creating the life of their dreams. And you guys have heard me. If you're a regular listener, you you, um, know I always talk about how much fun we have in the process. But you can find out all about me by going to carolynowens360.com, and you can go from there to all my social media platforms, my website. It's like that connection hub that brings everything together. So you just check that out. And that's carolynowens360.com. Now, on the last show, we talked about starting ugly, not waiting for perfection, but doing the research, coming up with a plan, and taking action. And even though it may not be as pretty as you want it to be, you, you got to taking the step that the hardest part can be taking that first step and, and get moving, be it in your career, your business, or even your personal life. So you can check out that recording here on Blog Talk. Um, for some reason, it has not uploaded an Apple podcast yet, and i got to see what the disconnect is there. But I'm going to be working on that and figuring out why it didn't upload um, to Apple Podcasts. I think it's something with the RSS feed. And I've learned to be some of the technical stuff over the years, but I'm going to figure out what's not connecting there. But with starting ugly, if you're a business owner, you just remember one of the key things you want to focus on that you have to think about is your marketing. Okay, eighty percent of small businesses are going to go under within the first 18 months. Or a business owner can become so overwhelmed and frustrated with all the day-to-day activities because a lot of people don't realize what it really takes to be a business owner, what it takes to be an entrepreneur. And it's some challenges, getting your business out there, getting recognized. So the people, you know, they, they say people do business with people they know, like, and trust. But you've got to, people got to get to know you, and that can be very frustrating. So within the first three years, they quit. You know, you can get so close to the edge, and then it's like, all right, forget it. I'm done with this. Now, when you add in a global or nationwide crisis like we're experiencing now, it is even harder for a small business, well, any business to survive, be it if it's a profit or a nonprofit business. And so I, I just want you, as we're talking about marketing today, don't you don't just think of the you know business owner for profit because a nonprofit is a business too, and you have to sustain and you people have to know who you are, what you do, and getting that word out about your business. And when they quit or when you know that goes under within eighteen months, that business owner or that owner of that nonprofit or charity they're still left with the debt that comes with that. You know, so that's what you, if you have the passion, if you have the dream and you want to be a business owner, you got to figure out how do you continue moving forward and create success in your business. Marketing for results may be the key to getting and keeping your business thriving. So our guest this week, our special guest we have for this episode is Enterprise digital marketing specialist and business growth expert, David Summerfleck. And David is committed to helping business owners make the transition from being operational to establishing sustained, I want to say that again, sustained profitability and self-reliance. 
struggling business owners need more than just that online presence. You know, you hear, you'll hear um, marketers or different branding coaches and people say, be on social media. Well, it is so much more to it than just being on social media. You need to understand how to have that edge of marketing combined with digital media. And some of David's past clients include Microsoft, AOL Time Warner, the City and County of Denver, Johnson and Wales University, and many, many tech startups. And he's also written over 50 publications, including he's written for over 50 publications, which includes the Naples Daily News and Fox Realty. And you can find him online. His website would be dms.blue, B-L-U-E. So I am going to bring him online because I know you really don't want to hear me. You want to hear him. And, of course, there's this tech thing that's been happening lately. I was trying to get the mic on. I think it's happening now. A little delay. Here we go. Hello, David. Are you there? Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Welcome to Let's Coach. Well, thank you for having me. Um, I don't know if there's a delay or not, um, so I'll try not to talk real fast. Um, <laughs> but um, basically, you know, uh, I hope you and your listeners are doing well today and staying safe considering all the, the crazy stuff going on out there. You know, I, I have to say I am one who, in, in this case, I'm playing by most of the rules, staying in as much as possible. Um, and so I just pray for it to kind of resolve itself soon. And I'm going to be talking, and I think we're going to talk a little bit about how this impacts our business today, but also, if, you know, future, when we come out of this, what's going to happen, you know? But you have been working in working in this marketing arena for over, for 20 years, and I want to take a minute and go back to the very beginning for a moment. Um, what led you to even get into marketing? Well, I say 20 years because 20 years is kind of a safe um, number <laughs> for me. It's probably it's probably been more than that. Um, I've, I've also worked as a college administrator. I started a nonprofit mediation, uh, mediation nonprofit organization as well. Uh, I also worked for many different marketing agencies. I freelanced in between working with them. And I was a, a college professor as well. I taught journalism and English um, for two different colleges. So it's kind of mixed in all between all of that. I definitely have at least 20 years experience directly in marketing, working for marketing agencies. Um, I've also worked as a political campaign consultant where you would consult with the politician or his or her team in how to put together their marketing and how they should frame specific topics so voters can understand it better. So <laughs> there's a lot. Um, so how did I get started? I basically went to college and studied writing. I have a degree in English with an emphasis in creative writing. That was my passion. And, of course, you know, while you're diagramming sentences and studying Chaucer and Keats and Shakespeare, after a while it just became, it wasn't as much fun for me to write anymore. You know? Wow. And um, I couldn't really read without analyzing something and um, I couldn't write anything without really looking at it and saying it's not as good you know <laughs> as so and so and if it's not as good I, you know the, the heck with it I remember reading Stephen King's first novel he put in the trash can and his wife took it out and submitted it to different publishers and it took like a year or two before somebody finally bought it and that became Carrie Ah, so yes, Carrie. You know, yeah. So for me, I, I graduated with a degree in English with an emphasis in writing. I had a couple of internships. I worked for a few little marketing companies. I wanted to be a writer. All the writing got jobs were extremely low paying. They all either required a master's degree or uh, mm -hmm. connections. You know, who do you know? who can get you in the back door this newspaper or magazine, which are very closely knit and still are. 
So I just said, well, you know, this isn't going to work. And I, you know, while I was studying in college, I was studying a new thing, which was website development and programming. So I said, you know what, what if I apply what I know about marketing and writing and start to really get into this web stuff? And, and that was in the uh, mid-90s when the Internet was just beginning. So I slowly transitioned more into that. And as I've gotten older, and certainly with COVID-19, I've decided to take a step back and not be as active online and just really get back to basics. And I kind of see it as an opportunity to go back and start rereading the classics and start writing more. And it's very ironic that I really wrote my first real book um, right before this hit. And, you know, I was just talking to my wife this morning and saying, you know, I know I, I think I have about two or three more business books in me and then maybe a novel or two. But I feel like I've got at least two or three more business books in me. So it's kind of a long-winded answer to the, how I got into marketing. <laughs> Well, it's and it's sometimes, I mean, you think about that happens to a lot of people in life where they'll start down one path and they realize, and this is not exactly what I want to do, but how can I combine my experience and what I've learned to something that I'm going to enjoy doing? And from what I've um, read and conversations we've had, it seems like you, you know, made a great decision and have been very successful in the marketing arena. Well, I, I mean, I'm not a millionaire or anything, but um, I, I would say I'm, I'm semi-retired. Uh, a couple of years ago, I kind of just said, well, I don't really need to work with clients if I don't want to. So now I would say if I work with one to three clients per quarter, I could kind of just do it not so much for the money, but because the client wants to grow. They care about their business. It's important to them as opposed to they're curious and they're new to it completely and they're very cheap or what have you. I don't have to work with them or try to. I can just say, look, you know, I'm very experienced at this point. If you really want to get something done and this is real to you and matters to you and your family, I'm open to, you know, going further and talking with you. If it's not important to you, I'm just not going to chase after them. So it's a good place to be in, especially now. I think for business owners, it's a great place to play where be where you can actually choose who you work with. You don't have to, um, you know, when people are first starting out, they like that they want to have more clients to bring in more revenue. But when you get to that place as a business owner, where you can choose. But I do want to, you know, we we talk about marketing. We talk about digital marketing. And so I want to clarify yes. something for our listeners is that is there is there a distinct difference between marketing and digital marketing? Absolutely. There is a profound difference, and it's very, very important uh, that people recognize this. You know, I, I talk to people every day, as you can imagine, whether it's online on forums or video conferencing. And back when I was going to networking events and giving workshops, um, I would be approached on a very, very regular basis where people would say, look, my Wix or Weebly or Squarespace or whatever website is just not attracting any new phone calls. I'm not getting any new emails from people who want to work with me. What's going on? And the reason is, quite simply, a DIY tool is not made specifically for, you know, for professional needs. And marketing is a very general, broad term. It means trying to connect with your ideal consumer or client. Digital marketing means using digital tools. So it's really important that people understand the difference is in, in terminology or knowing that, you know, it's like that old saying, you know, you, you, you use a screwdriver to put in screws, you use a hammer for a nail. If you want to attract more leads online, you would want to work with an experienced professional mm -hmm. digital marketer who would use all these different tools to accomplish an overall goal. So, the, yeah, there's a huge difference. 
And I, I, I want to kind of put an emphasis on that, that you could have there, – there's someone who could be working in marketing, but if you're looking to do stuff online – with um, digital resources, you want someone who understands and knows and has experience working or is, is basically a digital marketer. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I can tell you and your listeners as someone who's worked for more marketing and advertising agencies than I can remember, um, <laughs> I just stopped counting after a while. And every single marketing agency – will tell you that they do digital marketing or online marketing, 99.9% of them outsource it. And almost all of them, almost all of them will use Craigslist or Fiverr or up year, Upwork. I call it Upyear's work. Um, they, almost, they almost all use these tools to outsource. And what they do is they say, well, I've got a client who wants a website. And so I'm going to hire someone online to do it as cheap for me as possible. And, of course, they're going to skim off the top. So whatever they would charge the, the customer, for example, three to $5,000, they'll take 80% of that or more and then give the remainder to whoever they outsource the work to. And the client is almost always left holding the bag saying, okay, I've got this now, but nobody's calling me. What do I do? Mm. So and, and unless you really know who you're working with and you know how to distinguish them from a neighborhood hobbyist or, you know, some, you know, just somebody who wants your money, if you don't know how to distinguish them and what your objectives should be, then you end up like 99% of the small business community out there who are going to go under within 16 months. And right now, everybody – I don't want to say everybody is going under, but, I mean, I saw this morning Nordstrom is talking about filing. Uh, Panera Bread is selling groceries because people aren't mm-hmm. going into their restaurants anymore. Um, so it's going to be a restructuring of the entire American economy right now as the government just struggles to get a grip on how to handle this. You know, if you're a small business owner, you know that there have been talks about you getting loans. When are you going to get the loan? How much is it going to be? You know, good luck getting a clear, decisive answer on that. And when you get it, it may be a day late and a dollar short. So it's really, really important now in particular to think things through before you jump. And it's, and it's a time to either pivot or batten down the hatches, as they say. You know, and, and when you talk, when people are talking about these loans and everything, I, I want to add one other point is because people, I want to emphasize the word loan. Um, you, you will have to pay it back. It's not just being oh, given to you. But I, I've heard a few people who are anxiously awaiting for a stimulus check or a loan or yeah, the stimulus check will come to you, but it's not a lot of money to sustain what you have to do for your family, and the loan is going to come back. You want to make sure that there's no read the paperwork, there's no hidden fees or anything that's going to come out of it, but you do have to pay it back. It's a loan. So right. with all of this that's happening and, you know, um, the way you described things just now, what role does digital marketing play in this for a business owner well, or even for a nonprofit? It doesn't matter. Business is business. Your job as a business owner, let's say you're a nonprofit organization, you're a tech startup, you're a local, what they call mom and pop shop. Listen, the bottom line is for you to take care of your family and pay the mortgage and put food on the table. And that's what a business's job is to do. It's not to play games. And I was a certified small business mentor for an organization called SCORE, which is a division of the United States Small Business Administration, or SBA, for off and on about 10 years. And I talked to so many business owners that they literally lost track of how many people I was talking to. I would get other counselors referring others to me. I'd get three to four phone calls or emails every day. People would call me out of the blue, and I'd say, well, who is this? What, What are you talking about? You know, I've never heard from you before. There needs to be some context before I could just tell you prices and answers out of the blue. 
But, um, you know, it, it's really, really a crucial time. Digital marketing is about being online. So whatever the business is, if you're a barber, if you're a psychologist, if you're an accountant, if you're a lawyer, if you're a nonprofit organization, you really want to be number one in Google. And <laughs> let's get real. If you are not taking payments online, what is the point of you being online? You need money. So, you know, this, there's a virus out there right now. It's a global pandemic. You can think of it, whether it's a hoax or whatever people believe, it's real. It's crippling the, the, the United Kingdom, Italy, Spain, Canada, you know, in the U.S., I don't know how many, you know, people or how many businesses are going under right now every day and what the mortality rate is, but it's not a joke. So you need to have a website that can rank at the top of Google. You need to be able to take payments online because you don't want to go meet people online, I mean, in person. You don't want to be cashing checks at the bank. So this, this thing that people have been putting off for so long now, you know, being number one in Google, using digital marketing for various reasons. And not all of them, you know, I don't, I don't disagree with some of the reasons. You know, if you're a small business owner or an older business owner, you didn't ask for the Internet. You know, it's new to you. There are a lot of technical terms. It's not something for a hobbyist um, if you're a serious business owner, it's not something for you to jump into and want to grow a business from if you don't know what you're doing. You can waste years and, and a lot of money chasing your tail trying to do things yourself for free or super cheap or whatever. Um, it's like do-it-yourself dentistry. But, um, <laughs> you know, every business owner right now should be in a position where they can have video conferences with clients or customers. They should be delivering services or products to your door. If you deliver consultations or consulting, you should be able to do it by video and streamline it in as simple a way as humanly possible. Everybody's heard of Zoom. I don't use Zoom because it's not secure. And honestly, it's, it's, it's complicated for some people, some older people have a hard time with it. They don't like to use technology. They're very uncomfortable with it. Um, and some people don't want to download things. So you want to look at, you know, what tools you can use, but also who can you go to to help you have video conferencing for your clients or customers to help you set up home delivery or downloads so that you can be um, in a position where you can change with the times, you know, you, you talked about how a business can waste time, they can waste resources. Um, from You have your business, DMS uh, Blue, and the website for that is dms.blue. But when for you, what would you say was your biggest failure when it came to marketing for yourself, and how did you overcome it? Yeah, um well, you know, I'll tell you, Carolyn, I, I've had a couple, and I'd like to think that I learned from them. Um, you know, you know, I'd certainly hope so. Um, you know, I, I've been around for a long time now, and, um, you know, I learned from shifting careers, from thinking that I was going to be a writer, and then thinking, well, there's no jobs for writers where I live, or the, there are jobs, but they don't pay a livable wage, or they're all part-time seasonal things. Um, I didn't have connections. I just was a you know a, a shy college student who thought that quality would get me through, and it didn't. So then I transitioned, and I transitioned multiple times, and I'm doing it again now. You know, so I mean, I had a nonprofit mediation organization that went belly up after a couple of years. It was very stressful. It wasn't fun to listen to people's um, personal and business problems all day long, every day. And um, there was a lot of resistance in the local community. They didn't know what mediation was. Most people don't. Mm. So, um, you know, trying to tell people, hey, instead of going to court, we could sit down in a conference room with a, um, 
and we can work out the details and negotiate something, and then we'll take it to a lawyer for approval and then submit it to the court. Um, so trying to explain that to people who really want to fight or have a bone to pick, you know, and there's thousands upon thousands of dollars, you know, more than likely tens of thousands of dollars at stake, and, you know, I've got to show her, and who's, you know, and so on, <laughs> child custody. So it just, after a couple of years, it just wasn't worth it anymore. And one day my wife just came up to me and just said, look, this isn't fun. Pick something that you really enjoy doing that, if need be, you could do yourself completely. And I could help with if necessary, but you could carry the bulk of this. And I thought, you know what, I'll start a small digital marketing agency while I'm still, you know, working for this other much larger organization because they're not going to care what I do in my spare time. I'm not competing with them directly. Um, they're not going to care. So I started my own small digital marketing agency while I was working for a much larger agency full time. Mm -hmm. And I had already done much similar work. So I did that for quite some time. And then uh, when we moved to Florida a couple of years ago, I just said, it's time for me to consolidate all of that overhead and just be one guy who has a team of four or five um, outside contractors whom I use if and when it's necessary. And so the lessons I learned really was not every business is going to make it. And moreover, what works for everybody else may not work for you. And for me, that meant, you know, they always say you can't always see the picture when you're still inside the frame. You know, I call it the Hamlet complex because it's like I can look at almost any kind of business owner or entrepreneur, and I can tell them after talking with them for a while what's going on, why things aren't going the way they want, and what they can do to reverse things very quickly. I've never mm -hmm. met somebody that I couldn't do that with. And... um it's very difficult to do that for yourself, though, because you're still it inside is. the frame. You know, it's very, very hard for me to look at myself objectively. Um, but I could see, you know, that when I decided to kind of consider hanging up my boots, so to speak, you know, let me consolidate all of this overhead, and um, for all intents and purposes, I can work as a small mobile agency, but. I'm going to say, look, I'm one guy with a handful of um, contractors who I can go to if the project needs um, help. Very seldom does it, does it actually, though. You know, and it's <clears throat> the reality of what you're saying is that not every business will make it. And I think, and, and that's where, like you said, the lessons come in that it doesn't mean you're not meant to have a business. But you can kind of reevaluate and start looking at if you didn't have a marketing plan, you might want to consider yeah. having one now. I think one of the things that people always talk about is, and it's it's different schools of thought on this from you know different marketing companies, um, that a business owner has to have a website. So, what is your philosophy? Does the business owner need that website? My question to them, and I've had this question actually asked me hundreds of times on forums mm -hmm. and everything. My question is, what, do you like money? That, that's <laughs> my question to Do you want to make money? And, you know, believe it or not, not every business owner or entrepreneur or nonprofit, for that matter, wants to grow. They, it may seem counterintuitive, but not everybody wants more money. Not everybody wants to grow, and not everybody can handle it. You know, mm -hmm. if you're a parent, if you're a parent, you know what happens if you take a teenager and you give them a couple of hundred dollars. <laughs> it's it's the same principle as going to a new, inexperienced business owner of any kind and giving them thirty thousand dollars. They may have the best intention, but they don't know what to do with it. So they're, they're going to spend money in, in areas where they, they might not need to. They're going to cut corners in areas that maybe they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. They're going to work with people they like or feel comfortable with 
who may or may not know what in the world they're doing. Yes. Or who or uh, tell a good story. Um, so, you know, do you need a website? Yeah, if you want to make money. If you don't care about making money, then don't do it. Um, you know, and and if you want to shoot yourself in the foot, go get a do-it-yourself or template builder thing and try to do it yourself. <laughs> do it fine if you don't if you don't care. If you're not connected to it and it's just uh, for fun. You know, like a, a, lo- a very small local church group, and you just want to do it for fun and just see what, what is this, you know, what could I do in my spare time or whatever, then go ahead and mess around with it. But that being said, even that is going to be on the Internet. Do you want your competitors or potential customers to see something that's incomplete or that doesn't represent you fully and, mm-hmm. you know, could be, could, could be up there for years and could scare away clients and customers who might otherwise want to work with you. You know, I remember my wife looking for a doctor recently, and we were looking for a particular type of doctor in a local area, one that we could go to who took our benefits at the time. And she showed me this clinic website. And I'm like, this doesn't look good. It has, like, ads on the bottom of it for local competitors and had like this uh-huh. big thing on the page that said, you know, get your free website at Wix and all this. And I'm like, no, please don't call them, please. This is not <laughs> serious. You know, someone who's making money and cares about growing a business is not going to have mm-hmm. ads all over their site for competitors and free DIY programs. Someone who has a legitimate business that's established is not going to bulk at spending two or three grand to get something up and running. And if you don't have two or three thousand dollars to invest, you can wait. Or you can work with someone and just say, look, I, I want to roll this out slowly because I'm I'm on a, a, a limited budget, but I really want to do things in a very professional way uh, with integrity that's going to bring in results for me. So how can we work this out in like a subscription model or roll things out slowly so that we do you know, 500 a month or, or how much every other month, or can we stagger this somehow? If it's realistic, most people will find a way to work with you, especially now. But, you know, I think there was a question. Can I jump ahead a little bit, or do you want me to wait if I have a, a future sure, question? No, go right ahead. <laughs> you were at, there was a question about budgeting, and this is a huge, huge, huge deal for people. How much is a website? How much is SEO? How much is social media? How much, yeah. how much? And it's like the old Chris Rock joke where he said, how much, you know, what can I get for one, you know, for one chicken nugget? Because he doesn't have, you remember that movie? He said he didn't have enough money for the whole chicken, so he wanted to buy one chicken nugget. You, you know, you get more for your money by just getting the whole chicken. And it's the same way with marketing. So the way you budget for digital marketing that gets results is really simpler if you look at, like, analogies. If you want to put an ad in a local newspaper, and most people don't buy the newspaper anymore. Their ad revenue is going – most newspapers are struggling with ad revenue, and they're going online because they're not making money with print editions unless it's in a retirement area. If you want to put an ad in a a local newspaper – whether it's print or online, they usually will not talk to you unless you're willing to pony up several grand. And the ad will only run for maybe a month or two if that, and they cannot guarantee you results, period. If you want to put an ad on the radio, most radio stations will also put their ads where? Online. And again, they're not going to talk to you for less than three or four grand, and it might be higher because it's been a while since I've done it. And they cannot guarantee you results. They won't. They'll show you metrics of what you could get, but they can't guarantee it. And television is the, the cost of putting, you know, buying a home. Even if you get an infomercial from midnight to 4 a.m., those still are not cheap. And they can't guarantee you results. And the same thing with a billboard. You lawyers love billboards. And they're a horrible waste of money. <laughs> Uh, they they love to go and put five ten thousand dollars on a, on getting a billboard or a sign on the side of a bus, but you got to ask yourself who's going to call a phone number on the side of a bus. 
somebody who's <laughs> desperate, probably doesn't have a lot of money, you know. Um, so, you know, that, that's not a good way to spend limited revenue. So how do you budget? A couple of thousand dollars, what you would spend to put an ad in a newspaper or on a radio station or a billboard or on the side of the bus. And you make the de the decision to work with an experienced professional, mm -hmm. not a neighborhood hobbyist or somebody from Craigslist or somebody who's, who can't speak English very clearly. And they may be very wonderful, heartfelt people who have a, you know, a heart to do what's right, but they're struggling to put food on the table. And if you can't communicate with somebody effectively, how are you going to distinguish whether or not they understand what, you're, what you want? And a professional should have references from verifiable sources that they can give to you that you can check. They should have case studies. They should have live things that you can look at. And they should really legitimately care about you and say, look, you know, if I can't knock this out of the park for you, we're not going to be a good fit. If you're not going to answer my questions, I don't want to work with you. I'm sorry. You know, and they really, you, they should care. If they're just hurry up and, and they're very salesy and they don't ask you about objectives and why you need this, why haven't you done this before, why, are you wait, why have you waited to this point, if they don't ask you questions like that, they're probably not professional. You, you know, it's just like going to a doctor now. If they hustle you out, you're kind of like, well, wait a minute, I really needed to get treatment for this. It, it, it's just like you said with um, someone who may know marketing, they may not know digital marketing, but you can go to someone who designs a website who may not understand the marketing implications that go with building that website and what that website needs to have. So walking through that with someone and then being able to communicate together with the web designer, with the you know someone who understands digital marketing and marketing as a whole will help you really be able to establish that brand image and presence that you need. But you get the website built. It looks great. It's a fabulous looking website. But then you got to get people to the website. So That's right. what are some of the things people can that they need to do to get people to that website? Well, here's the thing. Um People have a tendency to look at price rather than cost. They hmm. have a tendency to look look at numbers rather than value. You know, you don't do that if you go looking at cars, do you? You want something that's <laughs> going to look really nice, that's going to present you in a very serious, professional manner. You go to a networking event. You don't go in there wearing a sloppy T-shirt and, and, you know, a pair of jeans with holes in them and food, you know, on your shirt and whatever and, you know, and kind of funky or whatever. You don't do that. But when it comes to websites, people love these free do-it-yourselfer things because there's this perception that any website will make me number one in Google. And that's not the case. If that were true, there wouldn't be people like me doing it for a living. There wouldn't be digital marketing agencies in every city in the U.S., for that matter, in the world, you know, working with business owners. It wouldn't exist if everybody could do it all for free. So it's a disconnect. Oh, nobody wakes up in the middle of the night saying, I need a website. They wake up in the middle of the night saying, I can't pay my mortgage. I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't pay my employees. I'm about to go under. What do I do? And they proceed from the assumption that, any old website is going to solve this problem miraculously. And that's not how it works. There's tools, but then there's the big picture. That's why I wrote my book, The Road to Digital Marketing Profits, because it's specifically for people who um, we take you from the premise that you're completely new to this. You may feel overwhelmed by all the technical jargon, and you're trying to get a grip on things, and you want to know, how do I get from point A to point B where I have nothing, and I want to make sure that I'm getting more phone calls. And I want to be able to walk into a bank or credit union and take out a loan and show them that I know how to use digital marketing because 
the bank is going to look at the business and say, if we give you our money, how do we know that we're going to do anything with it? What's your plan, David? What's your, how are you going to use social media? Oh, I don't know. I'm just going to post whenever I feel like it, and it's going to attract a million people. It just doesn't work that way. So there's a thing called search engine optimization or SEO, and you can read about it forever online. Everybody has a different opinion. Everybody says they're an expert. There's only really a, a, a handful of established industry expert sources online. And I'm not saying I'm Einstein with SEO. It's very complicated. It's very technical. And SEO, search engine optimization, is basically the science of working with search engines, of which Google is number one. So you're trying to figure out, how can I take my website and make it go to the top of Google, but only a certain type of customer is going to see it? And they're going to be customers who want what I do. They're going to see my website and go, you know what, that's what I was looking for. Oh, my goodness, let me call this guy up right away. So, for example, I have a client who's a private investigator, and um, – you can't just say, well, this is a website for a private investigator. There's millions of them out there. So for her, you want to only appeal to people in that particular city and in that particular state because there in that local market, most private investigators don't have websites, or if they do, they're not very good, or they don't invest in marketing or paid adver advertising. So I knew that I could do something for her. Whereas if you're a lawyer, for example, the competition can be very competitive for digital marketing, depending on what city you live in. So, um, you know, and there's different markets. So um, digital marketing is not a fad. It's not going away. And when you have something like a virus pandemic where you really don't want to be getting in people's faces, um, it's, it's really, really integral. And you're going to see more and more businesses going under as the days and weeks move forward, um, especially business, small business owners who just don't know what to do or it's too late. And you mentioned social media, and I know, you know people, if, if you want to make money about having a website, but what about social media? Um, is that something that business owners need to have a presence on? Yes. The short answer is yes. It's absolutely. The long answer is it's not a magic wand. Um, mm -hmm. Again, depending on your search engine optimization, how your website works or doesn't work, how, how quickly it loads, how well it works on phones, the design elements. There's a lot of different technical factors that go into ranking at the top of Google. And, again, that's SEO. So social media will help with your SEO. For some people, it can work within a few weeks and start generating results very quickly. For other people, it could take months. It could even take years. But it depends on your local demographics, how large a city you're in, how competitive they are for that uh, market niche or specialty. Um, so it, it, a lot of it depends. But everybody should be writing because at the end of the day, Google is a search engine. It's not a person. So it looks for content, and it looks for content that is interconnected. So it looks for images that are shared. It looks for things that tie into other things. It would just be like taking this podcast interview that I'm doing with you now and having a video version of this uploaded to YouTube. Well, now we, we can attract a whole other group of people who might not otherwise be downloading and listening to audio podcasts, now we can connect to people who look on YouTube and might want to just sit back and listen to it through YouTube or just see us talking and see, you know, what do you look like, you know. Um, 
<laughs> you know, but um, but you kind of get my point. Um, with social media, you can go crazy with it and lose focus very easily. There are uh, you know hundreds of social media platforms or channels. There's Pinterest that works only with images. Then you have YouTube and Vimeo and some other ones, Daily Motion, that work only with video. Then you have Twitter, which are very short sentences with hashtags and, and limited video. Then you have Facebook, which you know has billions of users, but the good thing is it attracts billions of users, but the bad thing is it attracts billions of users too. So <laughs> You're going to attract everybody and their kid brother and, you know, hacking, you know, hackers and people who just have nothing to do and are misrepresenting things. Then you have LinkedIn, which is more expensive to advertise through with paid advertising, but is more um, targeted to specific business owners. So you want to be strategic in what you do and how you do it. So, again, it's like – going into battle and not knowing what you're going to do. Well, oh, I'm a big, tough guy. I'm just going to wing it. That doesn't, that doesn't cut it. You want to have an organized, deliberate, structured plan. And I use the military metaphor a lot because I grew up around military families. My, my father was in the, the military for like 35 years. And although I never served in the military, I learned a lot from being around them. And they always impressed upon me the need to work from an organized, structured plan. And the plan isn't just to go jump in there and hope you win. The plan is to have multiple levels, multiple plans of attack, ways to protect your investments, what to do if things don't work out. Kind of like football, I guess, too, where, you know, they have different approaches. And if things don't work out for them as expected, they go into a huddle. You know, so there's other sports uh, metaphors or analogies, but social media is definitely an important tool. It's, it's a way to get your message across, but it's not a miracle thing. If you just post online every once in a while, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just not going to do it. I used to post every once in a while when I felt like it because I was busy work doing it for clients. So I'm like, well, for me, I just do it whenever because I'm getting the bulk of my referrals through other people and networking and workshops and boot camps and people who go to my website and so on. Um, and now I'm scaling things back because I want to really, really refocus. I don't want everybody calling me. Not everybody's a good fit. I don't want people to contact me if they think I'm going to do things for free or their budget is, you know, a hundred dollars or whatever. And it sounds crazy, but people will call you and just say, I want you to do everything that's humanly possible for free or my budget is nothing or, you know, a hundred dollars or whatever. They will contact you with that. And you have to just say, oh, yeah. you know, God bless you. Know, I, I can't work with that right now. I think and it's not so many of us. Yeah. Go it's ahead. not so much that, you know, they're not good people or you, maybe you shouldn't. Or it's not so much that is. If you work for free, your work oftentimes may not be valued, mm. and, and that's a key component because I personally have volunteered for a number of nonprofit organizations, and it would always go belly up very quickly. There was a nonprofit organization in Atlanta that helped uh, veterans, and I really wanted to help them because their message really resonated with me. I really wanted to help them. I cared about the the issue at hand. And as soon as the website went live and they called me, they said, well, we immediately started getting phone calls and emails. Oh, my goodness, what do we do? And I said, well, that's your end. That's your end. You're supposed to be ready to handle that. And, it, and then they yeah. said, wait a minute. What if, we, if somebody starts donating money to us, what do we do? And I said, well, you told me you had a bank account set up is a 501c3 nonprofit so you could accept donations legally. If you get audited, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an accountant, I can't help you. What are you going to do? So they just said, please delete the website. We just can't handle it. And I'm like, All Oh, right. wow. 
They, yeah, and I've tried to volunteer for other um, similar nonprofit organizations with very, you know, uh, heart-touching causes that really resonate with me. You know, children, uh, civil rights groups, um, animal welfare, uh, are all causes that I believe in. But if you're not ready to rock and roll from day one with an organized structure and a top-down, yes. uh, you know, I, it's not going to help you. You Even if you're number one at Google, what are you going to do when they start calling you or start giving you money? You've got to be ready, ready to handle that. I remember there was a retail um, owner I spoke to once, and we were talking about e-commerce, which is how you take money online, how you process payments. And they were asking me about it. And I said, oh, yeah, I could do this. Sure, no problem. I could even do more. I could, you know, I could do this and I could do that. And they said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. We don't want more customers. And I said, what do you mean? And they said, well, <laughs> not if we get more customers, this really did happen. She said, well, if we get more customers, we have to hire more employees. And if we have to hire more employees, now we've got to give them benefits or we have to train them and onboard them and issue them, you know, uniforms so you know who works there and who doesn't, of course. And, you know, and then that's going to increase, you know, our, all these other fees that we have to pay. And we don't want to do that. So I just said, well, maybe I'm not the guy. Um, so you're asking hypothetically, in other words, could we get more customers if we wanted to? And the answer is, of course. So then it begs, it begs the question, why do you, you know, what do you need to do to be in that position? And is that something that they want to pursue or need to pursue? And you can see when that's, you have to be ready when that spike hits and be ready to know you have to have that plan and you have to know it's because you want to be able to take care of your customers and have a strong reputation um, and not neglect them. So we're we're winding down here on the interview, and I want to make sure I, um, I ask this question. So what's the most important thing that someone needs to be doing right now when it comes to marketing? The number one thing I would say, especially when it, as it relates to my area of expertise, which is digital marketing um, mm -hmm. and marketing overall, is to bear in mind that this is a process. It's not a single item that you go and buy in the store. It's a process. You know, everybody knows that Walmart is number one. They're the number one employer in the U.S. Walmart went down briefly. I tried to order groceries online from Walmart, and they wouldn't take my money. They just said, no, we don't oh, wow. deliver. You're going to have to check back in a day or two. And if you don't check back, we really don't care. Amazon Pantry, which is a division of Amazon that sends you groceries, right? They went down for at least a day or two. How many millions of dollars did they lose in revenue? Mm -hmm. For them, they can, they can absorb that. But for the local business owner being down for a couple of days, losing some potential big-ticket customers, that's not someplace that you want to be, especially right now. So my point would be to see that this is a, a process and not a, a one-and-done you know, one shot deal here. You're not buying a stack of business cards um, or, or, you know, a, a suit. You're, this is a process and you need to be able to change course. You need to be number one in Google. You need to be able to take payments online. You need to make sure that there's a plan in the event that your website is hacked or goes down. Um, if you're going to ship, you need to know how to handle, um, you know, shipping, receiving, refunds, returns, exchanges, how you're going to handle increased demand. What are you going to do if demand isn't what you had hoped for or inventory? You need someone who can work with you across the board in all of those areas. So it's, it's a process. Well, Absolutely. I want to thank you. Thank you so much for being here today. But I also want to make sure people, they know, how can they get in touch with you what social media platform should they um, follow you on? Well, I'm a big believer in simplicity. And I just tell everybody DMS.blue. And I've had a lot of people kind of 
wig out or their eyes, they kind of look at me funny. Funny when I say uh, DMS dot blue, they're like, well, what is that? And, well, no, it's a le- it's a legitimate website domain name. It's real. I'm not you know hallucinating or anything. DMS dot blue. DMS are my initials. It's what I do. A digital marketing specialist. And blue is my favorite color. So I just tell everybody, go into that address bar where you type in Google or usatoday.com or whatever, and just type in dms.blue, and I'm very, very easy to find from that website immediately. Um, You can call me. You can send me an email very quickly from there. And all my social media platforms that I participate in are at the bottom of that uh, page. I participate in Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn, and people can reach me through there as well uh, just by looking up DMS.blue. And even and really, if you go to Google and just type in DMS.blue, it will still come up right away. So I'm just, just curious, which is your – my listeners know Twitter is my thing. I love Twitter as my social media platform with Instagram is this, you know, right behind it. What is your favorite social media platform? Um, you know, I used so many and like I said, now I'm trying to winnow it down to just two or three. So I'm slowly transitioning more into Twitter, um, getting away from Facebook for different reasons and just, kind of going into YouTube and doing more video and mm-hmm. uh, Twitter and just, just Twitter, those kind. Because, you know, again, less is more sometimes. You know, instead of telling you this big, long website address and reach me here and there and everywhere else, simplicity rules. You know, you can reach me at Twitter at DMSBlue01 and – on YouTube, if you type in dms.blue, you'll find me on YouTube right away. And um, on the Internet at dms.blue. And if you want to call me, you can call 424-DAVID-01. So consistency and simplicity rule when it comes to marketing. Is that fair to say? I think so. I think so. People are going through stressful times. And we have to, as marketers, we have to be empathic to them, or at least try to be. You know, um, families are being stretched. The business owners are reaching something a lot of people have never seen in their lifetime. And um, we still don't know how this is going to play out. It's evolving very slowly very slowly. We're probably a month or two behind Italy um, as far as what's going on with this. So, you know, I I like to just be simple and just tell people, DMS.blue, don't worry about anything else, (laughs) you know. But since you like Twitter, (laughs) DMSBlue01. And if you uh, send me a message on Twitter, I always respond unless it's spam or something like that. Well, I want to thank you again for being our guest today on Let's Coach. We really appreciate all the tips and strategies you shared with us. For our listeners, please go ahead and connect with David, dms.blue. And again, you can find me at carolynowens360.com. Now, our next show, we're going to be talking about relationships in a time of crisis. Relationships are being tested right now, all types of relationships, but especially those intimate relationships we say we treasure. Right now we're finding out if we truly treasure those relationships. So again, I want to thank you for joining us for another exciting episode of Let's Coach. David, thank you so much. And remember, it's all about success on your own terms.